Hi there, so I'm going to make an extended video and um, these extended videos are really videos to help you understand conceptual ideas of physics and to be honest these ideas aren't absolutely necessary for you to pass your exam um, you can answer the questions fine about these, these kind of concepts but um, sometimes a lot of people like to understand ideas in their completeness so um, these videos are basically to help you understand things better and um, I include them separately because they're kind of concepts which aren't absolutely necessary for um, your exam. So, in this video, we're going to kind of explain a bit more detail what electromagnetic induction actually is, why Lenz's law is relevant, and why magnetic flux linkage. What is magnetic flux linkage really? So, um, let's take a look at Lenz's law first. Um, Lenz's law states that um, the EMF induced is equal to negative uh, number of coils. Uh, times change in magnetic flux linkage over change in time. Okay, so what you've kind of got here is you've got the interesting thing here is you've got this negative sign and I didn't really explain what this negative sign meant in the last video and a lot of people don't understand what this negative sign means. It's a really difficult concept to grasp. Because well, the reason it's difficult is because these are scalar quantities. Whereas with simple harmonic motion, for example, you could see that acceleration was always in the negative direction of velocity, this negative sign makes sense. Because these are vector quantities, their negative sign simply connotates a direction. But in here, EMF is a scalar quantity, magnetic flux link is a scalar, number of coils scalar, and time is scalar, so this cannot possibly indicate direction. Can it? Well, you'll come to understand that the, um, the, the negative sign is actually important. It's not something that we can just ignore, and it does have a lot of meaning, which I will go into shortly. And that's kind of what I want to ex um, explain in this video. So, let's go ahead and um, kind of take some examples of what magnetic... But before we act, we have to kind of consider what magnetic flux actually is. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a magnet, uh, a magnetic field here. And I'm not going to draw... But I'm going to draw like that. Okay, so magnetic flux linkage is kind of the entirety of the mag how many magnetic field lines are encapsulated by a circuit or by a wire. And I'm going to explain that in a, just a second. So if I was to draw a circuit, a simple square circuit like that, uh, I could tell you that the magnetic flux linkage of this circuit is six arbitrary units, just to make up some units. So, this magnetic flux linkage is just all the magnetic flux encapsulated by the circuit. And what I have to kind of admit is magnetic flux isn't a real, it's not, oh, I can't really say it's not a real thing, but it's it's kind of an idea we physicists have kind of made up because we never actually talk about abs magnetic flux or magnetism in absolute terms. We always talk about change in magnetic flux. It's just kind of like gravity. You can't really have an absolute gravitational potential, but you can only have change in gravitational potential. But the problem is, as people, we can't understand change without having an absolute final value and an absolute initial value. Um, that's supposed to be, sorry, that's supposed to be a minus sign, not a plus, equal sign. So we kind of need a final and initial value. So we've kind of made up a system which kind of works out for us. So this is our, this is our magnetic flux linkage, and I'll show you why it works for, change, for changes. So if we say we move a wire, if we translocate it so that it's over here instead, so this side ends here, and this side ends here. Actually, I'm going to paint that in a different color so that we can really get a clear idea of what's happening. So say I move this wire here. So it looks like, it now looks like this. Okay, what's its new magnetic flux? Its new magnetic flux is still 6. So even though we've moved the wire, the, magnetic, the change in magnetic flux linkage is, is 0 because the amount of change, it, it has got no change. It's, it's gained no magnetic flux. And I mean, this makes sense. If we use our right hand rules, we'll see that there is a force applied um, on this side by this side moving rightwards of if we use our right hand rule, our middle finger goes downwards, our right fin index finger goes right, and this one will go upwards. So we see that electrons are being forced upwards that way. So in EMF, there's a terminal PD across these two. So this will be the more positive one, and this will be the more negative one. But over here, um, the, the, mag the electrons are all, or the positive protons are actually also being forced up, or the arbitrary positive charge is also being forced up. 
So we also have a positive change here and a negative change here. And you'll notice that the, the PD between this, these two points, is zero. And same between these two points, it's also zero. So that means that there will be no current flowing. So you can kind of see why there no, this, there's actually no change in magnetic flux because no current will flow. Uh, so let's take a look at, if we look at this from some other ways, what would happen instead of taking this magnetic flux and what if we stretch this wire out, what if we stretch this wire outwards so that we made it look like that. So this is a kind of a flexible wire and we've kind of stretched it outwards so now it looks like that. What's its new magnetic flux? Let's count. So we have 4 going this way, 4, 5 going that way. So its new magnetic flux is 20. So we've gone from um, from 6 to 20. So our change in magnetic flux is actually 14 magnetic flux units. And if you think about this, when the wire moves outwards, cutting, it will cut 14 crosses. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, I mean, the... Really, this is kind of an idea. You can kind of see now how it, how it kind of works. It kind of gives an arbitrary final and an arbitrary initial value, but when you put them together, you get a real change because the real change is just a change in position of wire. So the, this would induce an EMF um, because the, all the wires cut all the magnetic fields, and this would induce an EM, uh, magnetic flux change of fourteen. And the same thing would happen if we stretch it. If we, I'm um, sorry. If we make it more narrow, if we made it into a small box like this, the new magnetic flux would be 1, from 6 to 1. And if you see this wire, if you imagine this wire cutting down, it would cut 5 units on its way coming down. So that's kind of simple to understand, and that's really what this magnetic flux idea is. And carrying on a little bit further, um, what happens if we kind of have this kind of idea? So imagine if there is, say, uh, bar magnet here and it's giving out it's just a radiant magnetic field I'm just going to draw it like that for simplicity's sake sorry like that for simplicity's sake um, let's call this uh, let's call this uh, wire sorry let's call this a wire that's generating a magnetic field so right hand grip pull coming in the magnetic field is going this way and we know that magnetic field is weaker here than it is in there if we have say a wire coming through, we can see that as this wire moves across, it's gonna it's gonna cut through more and more lines. And because there's because you have to imagine that there are say this many magnetic flux lines here, but over here there's this many magnetic flux lines. So it's as it goes through, the amount of flux lines inside the square will increase as it gets in. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, as you get into a more magnetically strong field, the you get more magnetic flux inside. And if you move outwards, you get less. So this is increasing magnetic flux, this is decreasing magnetic flux. So what's important is it's not the field lines cutting through the physical material of a wire. It's kind of an abstract idea of the area contained within the wire and how many flux, how much flux is going through that. Which might seem really bizarre, but as we saw before with the shrinking and expanding wire, um, it, it, it makes sense when you talk about change. So that's why we have this kind of abstract concept. But now I want to introduce to you um, the idea of um, physics conventions. So imagine we have our magnetic flux going across here again. And say for example, I have a line going like this. And say my, my the rest of the circuit actually looks like that. So if I also look, um, do a side view of this, it would actually look like this. So here's my magnet, here's my magnet, here's my lines going across and here is my wire going across like that is that right? yep so there's my wire going across like that and then but then the other side of the wire is outside of a magnetic field so only this one line is inside magnetic field. So this magnetic this wire is actually representing a one-dimensional space inside this wire. So we pretend this has no width. So does this one wire still have magnetic field between magnetic flux linkage? Because there is no area. Well, we kind of physicists have kind of made up a convention for this, and this is um, again <coughs> following the right-hand rule. So if you take your Okay, so um, basically this is what's happened. We've kind of said what we are going to do is because these these wires here that come out of a page don't participate in the magnetic field 
And if wires were to come across a page like that, so if they were to go, in this case, they would be going down, like that, we kind of draw imaginary wires here, that they don't really exist, but we pretend they exist. So even though the wires actually coming straight out of a page, we imagine there's wires going across, and everything contained in the wires across that go on for infinite distance is this thing's magnetic flux linkage, is this one line's magnetic flux linkage. So now the idea's got even more abstract. We've given this an imaginary area that extends forever, and everything contained in that area is this magnetic flux linkage. But remember, we're only using the idea of magnetic flux linkage as to talk about change, so you'll soon see how this makes sense. Because when we move here to here, when we move our wire to here, and let's say, I'll draw this over. When we move our wire to here, and draw this over a blue line, you can see now that, I, so before we had three magnetic flux units, and now we have six magnetic flux units. And which that means the change in magnetic flux will, linkage will be equal to three. And you can see this wire has indeed cut through three magnetic field lines. And this is the kind of central concept. Even though this kind of area that it we it has this, we give it an imaginary area which, area which extends forever. And you might be, that's impossible, there's infinite magnetic flux. But there isn't, because there is still a difference between our final and our initial magnetic flux. But then you might beg to differ the question. H how do we know that magnetic flux goes left or right? So, I mean, is the area of this yellow line all the magnetic flux encompassed in this direction, in the right direction, or the left direction? And would that mean... Because, I mean, if you think about it the other way, if we imagine it as going the area, of the area going rightwards, like that, if we imagine it's the area going rightwards, then what would before we would have had nine, and afterwards we would have had six, and the change would be negative three now, because we would have cut, we would have decreased in magnetic flux linkage, and this is a kind of hard to grasp concept, because magnetic linkage can both increase and decrease. So, um, in this case, we've kind of just made a convention. Um, if you, this is a right hand convention. If you point your finger, in, uh, a right hand, and take your thumb and point your thumb in the direction of the magnetic field lines so that's into the page. The direction your fingers curl round will be the direction of positive EMF induction. So, um, in this case, positive EMF induction will be this way. And positive EMF induction happens when the magnetic flux decreases, because we look at our equation. EMF induction equals negative change in magnetic flux. So if, it, if this is negative, two negatives make a positive. So we've kind of just made this convention. So that's why when the, when the, but if you don't want to remember that, just remember when the lines are going into the page, we take it from the left. When they're coming out of the page, we take it from the right. But that's kind of just a convention we've made. We always take it from the left. So you have to realize that magnetic flux can increase or decrease. And even though we're both, in absolute terms, cutting the same magnetic field, the induced EMF in the normal direction, which is, this is the normal direction, is still able to be expressed. So, um, and this is, would be negative EMF. And this is just kind of a convention. So you just have to remember a right hand, it's a right hand grip rule all over again. The thumb goes in the direction of magnetic field lines, and your fingers curl around in the direction of a positive current, or the, I mean, the positive EMF. And if, it, um, if your magnetic field is decreasing, it goes in the direction, opposite direction. Um, so decreasing magnetic field causes positive EMF, increasing magnetic field causes de um, negative EMF. So this is positive, um, this is, sorry, this is positive EMF, negative change in potential, uh, in magnetic flux linkage, and this one is negative EMF, positive change in potential, uh, positive change in potential. Just remember, when it's coming into the page, potential goes to the left, and when it's coming out of the page, potential goes to the right. And its magnetic flux linkage is an area inside a circuit. I hope that clears things up for you and explains why this negative sign exists. Um, if, if we took the other convention, then the negative sign wouldn't actually be necessary because we would have... Because if it because it would actually make sense if you just try it out. So that's kind of what magnetic flux linkage is. That's why Lenz's law has a negative sign. It's all about how we've set our conventions and that these scalar quantities can actually in fact represent directions. So I hope you understand why magnetic flux linkage can increase and decrease now. So if we move a blue wire backwards into the position of orange wire, you would notice that that's actually a decreased magnetic flux because the area taken, taken from the left of magnetic flux is actually been less. And um, you, can, you take it with a shape when there's a shape and when there's not a shape you kind of imagine a shape. 
So um, thank you for listening to my video, and I hope you this understood uh, can explain this kind of abstract concept somewhat clearly. And um, if you have any problems, comment and please visit my blog. Thank you very much.